Okay. So last time I taught this class, it took the students forever to figure this out. I mean, it's, it figures bad or what, but anyway. So we have our principal stresses. And they are, they're orthogonal, right? The three principal stresses are orthogonal. And so all we're doing is defining a set of angles between the principal stress frame, the orthogonal principal stress frame, and the geographic frame, which is north, east, and down. Okay? And I think it'll be useful if we see that, you know, while there's three angles there, or, you know, it looks like in the end we'll have one rotation matrix. But what it really is is just three isolated rotations. Okay? So we're going to start. Imagine if alpha, beta, and gamma are all zero. Okay? If alpha, and beta, and gamma are all zero, S1 points in the north direction, S2 points in the east direction, and S3 points down. So the two coordinate frames are superimposed on one another. They're, they're identical in that case, if alpha, beta, and gamma is equal to 0. Right? So then what we're going to do is let's just keep two of them 0 and make, and make one of them non-zero. We'll do them one at a time. Okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to assume alpha is non-zero. Right? So if we look, say, down this axis, if we're, we get up in a plane and we look down on the Earth, right, then we're going to have north and east and S1 and S2 and the angle between them will be alpha. Okay? So we're going to have have north and east and S1 and S2 and this angle is alpha and of course this angle here is alpha and it's positive as I have it defined, okay? Because remember, positive angles are the way your hands curl in the coordinate frame, right? So I have north, curl my hands to east, my thumb is pointing into the board, so the, the positive angle alpha that way, it's the way your hands curl in a right-handed frame. Okay? So then what I want to do is I want to write north I want to write the, so now these are just vectors. I'm not just going to use geometry, right? So I just have a vector in, and I want to write it in terms of S1 and S2 and alpha. And so if I do that, I have S1 cosine, and then just to be precise, it's minus alpha, the way I have it defined minus S2 <coughs> sine minus alpha. Okay. East, the same way. I have a vector E, and I want to write it in terms of S1 and S2, just geometry. So I have S1 sine minus alpha plus S2 cosine minus alpha. And D is S3. They're identical, right? So I didn't draw S3 because it's, we only did one rotation, which means that S3, we're rotating about that axis. So they're pointed in the same direction <laughs> into the board. Right. Now I can write this in matrix form. north, east, down is equal to cosine minus alpha 
sine minus alpha. S1, S2, S3. Right. So this is a matrix. I'm going to call it R1. Okay. So that's one rotation. Right. Now imagine they're all zero again, so we, they're superimposed on one another. Now let's rotate beta in isolation. If I rotate beta in isolation, what I'm going to do is, you know, the rotation is going to be about the east axis, right? So I'm going to look down the east axis, and we'll have north and down, and S1 and S2. I'm sorry, S1 and S3. S1 and S3. So I have north. And down, S1, and S3, and this is the angle beta. Okay. So I'm now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to write north, this is S1 cosine minus beta plus S3 sine minus beta. East is S2. That's the axis the rotation's about. And down, I'm going to have minus S1 sine minus beta. plus S3 cosine minus beta. And then I'm going to write that in matrix form. I'm going to have cosine beta 0. Sine minus beta. Zero, one, zero. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. So I think when I, when I did this on my paper, I looked at it this way. It's easier for me to, yeah, so, if I look at, let me draw S1, like, so let's look at, let's look at this figure. Okay. So let me draw S1 like this, and north like this then alpha is like that, right? And I want to know what the, the component of, so I want to know what the component of north is, you know, so it's like north is, or S1 has a component north times the minus 
it's the problem. The, the issue is that uh, I really probably should have written everything. S, I should have written my matrices the opposite way. S1, S2 equals something times north, east, south, down. Okay. But and in that case, I would have had all positive angles. But but it's it's a little bit odd in that. I'm given normally, you know, I'm I'm given S1, S2, and S3, and I want to do sort of a reverse rotation back, back into the coordinate frame. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if I explained that well, but that you know, I'm given. I have S1, S2, and S3, and I want to do a reverse rotation back into the northeast south. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. I'll make these notes here available too. So, anyway. Um, okay. So, so now we just want to do the last one. Okay. So in the, in the last one, remember they're all zero, so they're superimposed on one another. And now we're just going to rotate gamma, right? So gamma is a rotation about north. So I have east and down, OK? And then I have S2 and S3. So I have east and down. Consistent with what I did. And I have S2 and S3. And I think I'll just go ahead and write the matrix form. I guess that last one, I sh don't know if I labeled it. So I'm going to call this S3. This is, I'm sorry, R3. This is R2, OK? And so then what I can do, I can just say RG is going to be equal to R3, R2, R1, OK? And I was going to, maybe I'll do that at the beginning of the next class. Um, I was going to do it all in Mathematica just to show you. Mathematica is really good at symbolic computation, so you could literally just type R3, R2, and R1 in, multiply them, and what you'd see that we'd get is that. Okay. Right? So with that, if we know, you know, we're given S1, S2, and S3, we can figure out what the three angles are. We can then use this equation to rotate it back into the geographic frame. Okay? So at the next class, we'll, we'll work an example by hand, right? But ultimately, this is a, seems like a perfect candidate. I mean, who wants to? Who wants to type this out every time? Who wants to type this into your calculator every time? This seems like a perfect candidate for a little function in MATLAB or in your favorite programming language, right? The function could take the arguments, because this is never going to change, right? So it could take the arguments, uh, alpha, beta, and gamma, and compute the rotation matrix for you, right? Or you could take it a step further and say, you know, you could give it the principal stresses 
alpha, beta, and gamma, and it'll return the stress in the, because ultimately, uh, the stress in the, in the geographic coordinate system is going to be this. Remember when we, in the linear algebra lecture, we talked about how tensors or matrices transform, right? Well, they transform via this, uh, via, via this formula. So the stress in the geographic frame is just going to be the stress, the principal stresses, uh, RT, RG transpose times that times RG. And so this is sort of a, you know, after we work one or two by hand, then it's a sur sur sort of a perfect candidate to, you know, write a little program for. Because then you'll never get it wrong. Okay? So we'll end there. <laughs>